discussed about the theories of evolution. Now, whenever we will start the discussion, the first name that appears or comes to mind is of Lamarck, the Jean Baptiste Lamarck. Uh, he was a keen observer and based upon his observation, he has noted down some findings. So in around 1800s or at the very early start of 19th century, he has noted down some observations and based upon that he has given some points. He proposed that life evolves or it has changed. So this was very important finding. The life, obviously we now know that it is evolving. We are into the state of evolution and changes. The change is something we know it is a constant thing. So as the condition changes, the organism tried to adapt according to it and try to evolve. So he was the first to explain the evolution as a process of adaptation. So he has given a word adaptation. Organism, he tried to change. According to the change, he evolved himself. And for that evolve, he has given a word or he has coined the term adaptation. And the foundation for this adaptation theory was based upon two principles or two points. One is law of use and disuse. So Lamarck, he believed that new organs, it arises according to the need of an organism and the size is determined by the degree to which they are used. So for this particular observation, he has given some supporting evidences like he believed that in earlier days onto the surface of land there was a plentiful amount of grass. So the organisms like the horses or donkeys they were there with short neck. Slowly and gradually the grasses onto the surface were about to or they were finished. So the organism have moved from grass to herbs and shrubs. So they have started feeding on herbs and shrubs. And over the course of time even that was finished. Then the organism they have moved or for the food they have started grazing on the trees. And the trees which they can feed on, the leaves they can feed on, they were starting consuming them. But slowly and gradually over the course of time again the leaf of plants at a height which the horse or donkey like animals or zebra like animals they can feed upon they will finished and the plants will taller and for feeding for the sake of food and nutrition the, this particular animals they have to forcefully stretch their neck to eat the grass or to, or to sorry to eat the leaf of tall plants and slowly and gradually what happened because of the need these animals have stretched their neck and giraffe like animals they were formed so Lamarck he believed that the giraffe the present day giraffe they are adapted because of the condition and the next thing he has proposed was inheritance of acquired characters. The useful characteristics acquired by an organism during its lifetime can be passed on to its offspring. And for this particular observation, he failed to produce any supporting evidences. And next, it was August Wiesman who has disproved the Lamarck's theory of evolution or uh, adaptation theory. So in particularly this second observation that was given by Lamarck that is inheritance of acquired character over a course of lifetime is passed to the offspring. So we know this it cannot happen. So what August Wisman has done he has taken mice he has taken a pair of mice and he has purposefully 
knowingly has cut down its tail and allow them to breed the next generation that has formed it was having tail though the parents were lacking the tail but the new offspring was having tails so if it was on the if or if the tail or if this mice we are following the inheritance of acquired characteristics this mice they were lacking tail but the offspring they were having the tail so what next he done is he do uh, he has done is he has cut down the tail of the newly formed offspring and again allowed them to mate even their offspring were also having tails so he again cut down the tails and allowed them to breed and this continued for 21 generation but every time the new descendant they were formed they were having tail in it so august wisman he has helped to disprove the lamarck theory of inheritance of acquired characters so it is now pretty clear that the characteristics that are acquired by an organism over a course of life span they are not inherited to their offspring so for this we can also go for another example say for example someone who is an say athlete who is very fast in running may not be his child have the same characteristics or a bodybuilder over a course of his life he has developed very heavy muscles it is not so that his child will be of or immediately will, at the time of birth will be having very large muscles so this particular wisman has helped to disprove the theory of inheritance of acquired character which was proposed by lamarck next hugo de varis the mutation theory so hugo de varis he discovered the mutation and proposed that it was this mutation that were the source of new traits that permitted evolution to occur so here uh, even we will recall that the mendel's law was reproduced by this one of the scientist was hugo de varis so he has proposed a mutation theory what mutation theory suggests is the organisms that transfer their characters to the subsequent generation but some forces or there is some change which is not in their control or it can be a controlled change that change it was referred to or that word was given was or it was coined was a mutation so here we can find that as four colonies out of that one has been missing so this is what the missing is it has led to the change and this was proposed by hugo de varis in the form of the word mutation he discovered the mutation and proposed that it was this mutation that was the source of new traits that permitted evolution to occur now this was the one area in darwin's theory that was weak he was not knowing this term mutation so darwin darwin's theory did not account for the genetic basis of variation so later on new darwinism will we will discuss in our coming lecture we will add this now we will discuss about charles darwin so he was a naturalist english naturalist he proposed that evolution occurred as a result of natural selection so every time we will discuss about charles darwin then we will be discussing or we will talking about natural selection so it is the nature who selects or it is the condition among the condition the organism which can adapt or which can uh, best survive has been selected so now we know that the survival of the fittest so the basis for that is the natural selection so he has given on based upon some observations he has given some points over reproduction or over production so 
so what he believe it was again upon based upon the finding of a mathematician thomas maltus who has uh, written an essay on population and in his finding he has noted down that every organism has an ability to over reproduce that is the number of offspring they actually produced he has or that organism has very larger capacity or more capacity than that that is within a population more offspring are produced in each generation than can survive and why they can't survive is because of the limitation of space and food here we can add a term called as a competition because of the competition inter specific and intra specific the competition it checks the population level the competition individuals compete for the available food opportunity to mate and reproduce so because of this the numbers of organisms they are lower down they are cut down next variation within each generation some individuals are better fitted to survive than the other organism because of variation in the characteristics that is a change in the characteristics now this change that is been favored say for example the environment is very cold so the organism which can or which has ability to change or best uh, consider a organism or a species which can adjust according to the changing environment in this example consider organism which can sustain extreme cold so it is on the uh, favorable side or it can be favored over the other organism and it can lead to the variation next survival of the fittest those individuals better fitted to survive are more likely to live long enough to reproduce so again this principle is based upon the variation the organism who is able to uh, adapt according to the situation has higher chances of survival if it survives it can feed upon the nutrition and available resources it can best grow if it is in the best state of growth only then it can reproduce and increase its population next transmission of favorable traits that is reproduction offspring with fittest individual obviously with fittest individual will be able to inherit their favorable variation to the descendant generation and they will be on a favorable side to survive and again for the reproduced so over a course of time their population will keep on increasing the organism with the organism with maximum efficiency or maximum adaptation best suited they will grow and they will survive speciation next is evolution of species accumulation of favorable variation will gradually lead to appearance of new species better adapted to their environment it can lead to formation of different species now what were the weakness of darwin's theory so darwin he failed to account the genetic basis of variation so he has pointed out that variation has been there but what is the foundation of its variation was not known so later on we know now that it is the genes or the genetic content the change in the genetic content leads to variation natural selection natural selection is the process where inheritable traits that make it more likely for an organism to survive long enough to reproduce become more common over successive generation of a population and this is a very key mechanism for evolution in that case the charles darwin who has 
visited the Galapagos Island, he has found out the finches over there, the birds over there. So they were named as Galapagos finches or more prominently they are now known as Darwin's finches. They provided an excellent example for this process. Amongst the birds that ended up in arid environment, the one with beaks better suited for the eating cactus. So where there was scarcity of water in that area, the flowering plants were very low in number and the organisms like cactus, they were more. So the birds which have a long beak size, they were able to feed on the cactus. So they were at an advantage and obviously they have survived and they have uh, given down or they have inherited their traits to the next generation. Similarly, those with beak shapes that were better suited to get nectar from the flowers or eating hard seeds in the other environments were at an advantage over there. So depending upon the situation, the organism which was better adapted was having better survival rate. In a very re real sense, natural or nature has selected the best adapted variety so that it can survive and it can reproduce. The organism which can reproduce is the one who has been at an advantage by advantage level. So the organism which has survived has reproduced and they have transferred their characters to the subsequent generation.